Let's talk about Greek dragons. No, let's talk about what Plumas doesn't like about people that write about dragons. All right, let's just go ahead. All right. Oh, she's sloopy, guys. She's drinking the liquid today. I'm not drinking any liquor. Shut the... No! It's tea! <laughs> now that you think of it, it actually looks like whiskey. Doesn't it? All right, let's talk about plants. Shut the front door, Ross. Just shut it. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk about this book that we have here. Uh, written by John Boardman, and if you don't know this person, he's quite a famous uh, classic uh, doctor, classic studies. He is indeed a celebrity inside a classical field studies, a uh, classical studies field. Sorry. Y por eso es que yo puedo hablar español con fluidez. So, I'm really sorry, I think it's the Alex Jones thing that just got into my head and is messing around with the poor connection that's already in my brain. So, this book, a friend uh, got me acquaintance with, but I don't know, Let's. Uh, we're not going to talk, alright, I didn't get a script, I didn't get absolutely anything, but, but what I got is just my thoughts and I want to make a tiny disclaimer for myself first. I am not judging the person, I'm just judging the content of the book. We're going to talk about something very important, which is um, primary sources and specialists on certain areas, which are very necessary to consult if you are working with an area that's not your expertise and also I am not making any judgment I am I'm not talking about uh, I'm not going to talk about the whole book I'm going to address a particular part a particular section where this person John Borman Mr Borman says that basically long like very very short because it's indeed very short it's just a paragraph let me see if I can find it um, so I can project it on screen, but basically what he says is that the Chinese dragon, oh, there we have it, uh, I have, the I have it, I have it on, mm, I have it here, wait, 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 all right, yeah, this is what he says, basically he says the Chinese dragon, the, the aspect of the Chinese dragon, as we know of it, um, um, could she defend her plans to the horse? Just don't say yes, got her patron, thank you, Pichu. And he says that the Chinese dragon iconography, as we know of it today, comes from the Greek Ketos. I beg your pardon. I happen to defer. And truth of matter is that I do know what I'm talking about because for my thesis, I work with Chinese dragons and with quite ancient ones, in fact. Um, so, again, I don't know about the rest of the book and I don't know about the quality of what he's saying because I am not an expert in classics, absolutely not. I know nothing about the Greek world, but I do know about China and I do know about dragons. All right, dragons. Let's just first address the dragons and we're going to put... We're going to put up one of the most beautiful dragons that we have. Where is he? Where is he? Ain't he gorgeous? And he one of the most beautiful creatures you've ever seen. This is actually, this is, when is this from? Um, I want to change this view. Oh, look at it. Look at them. Aren't they gorgeous? And this is the sweetest thing. I love these dragons. Oh, what is this from? I cannot remember. Oh, this image failed to load. All right. This is from the Han Dynasty. All right. So according according to Mr. According to Mr. Boardman, these iconography, let me see if I can get a good grasp of his beautiful head. Look at that head. Look at these creature. Gorgeous, magnificent. Um, according to this person, this iconography was influenced by the powerful influence, and I'm really sorry about that, um, the Greek Ketos exerted in China, which is like... What? Um, see, this is what happens where you do not contact a person that's an expert on the topic because the Han Dynasty, we're talking about the third century before Common Era or something like that. And the truth of the matter is that we have examples of dragons from the 3000 before Common Era. Are you telling me, are you really telling me that, that a figure as relevant for Chinese cosmography and for Chinese mythology as the dragon itself? received its iconography from Greece? Is that what we're talking about? Because something, all right, 
I checked the bibliography and uh, these dragons are simply magic whippets. These ones? Sorry, my dyslexia. These ones or the Ketos? Are we talking about the Greek? Is there a thing like a dragon? There's no such thing like a dragon in Greek in, uh, in Greek mythology. We have Ketos, but Ketos is not a dragon. It's just, oh my God, yeah. Yeah, just please check with your, please check with the mythologies, please. All right, I looked up the bibliography. There is no a single book from a Chinese author. He certainly has not contacted any sinologist and Dragons are a very difficult topic. Do we know the origin for the name dragon? Yeah, in fact, it's a Chinese drawing. Is it Draco or something? No, it's a Latin word or something like that. I don't know the etymology, but these ones, th these ones, sorry. <laughs> these ones are called Lung, and Lung is the Chinese character. And we get register of those creatures, those, those godlike creatures since the 3000 and possibly even before, uh, how is this? You know what? Dragons are very difficult. The study of Chinese dragons is very difficult. And there's one thing that you might have in your list of skills if you want to study them, and that is Chinese. You need to be able to learn to, to read, sorry, to read and, and, and interpret Chinese characters, because if not, there's a lot of information you are missing. And for the part that I work with dragons in my thesis, I contacted two sinologists, two of them, one expert in mythology and one expert in art history, which, by the way, is another point I want to make. This is, uh, the book is actually emphasizing an art history part. Is it? He's addressing an art history event, but this is not an art historian, and he just assumes that uh, from uh, Tilia Tepe, is it Tilia Tepe, the part? Uh, yeah. Like, apparently, these features are uh, oh, and you should you should see the notes. The notes say absolutely nothing. The notes, like the the, the footnotes over here, they say no, nothing. They do not provide of any source of or any primary. Everything's run here. I mean, he's ignoring it's like this one, for example, from the thirteenth to the eleventh century before Common Era. Like, really, can't you see the horns in here and the muscle? According to this person, the reason the Chinese dragon is a reptile is because Greece came to influence China. Are we talking seriously right here? China influenced by Greece. Is it possible that it was the other way around? And do not get me wrong, I'm all up for exchange. I do believe in exchange as a part of an, a fundamental part of art history development and history development. But this is too much. This is too much. The dragon is something that's so intrinsically and deeply root in Chinese culture that you are gonna tell me now that the, the image of this creature comes from Greek sources. Are we talking straight right now? And that's another thing, that apparently the Greeks just teleported to Central Asia because they avoided Iran, they avoided Mongolia, they avoided this, the Eurasian plan, uh, the plane, and they just went to China, they just went to China and imported his, uh, his ghettos, which by the way, he was not even that popular, the ghettos one. He's like, uh, more things. This is, a, this is a dragon from the Shang culture. Oh, where they had it. Oh, no, thank you. I don't want to be a uh, keep it. Yeah, this one. Again, he's ignoring so many cultures, like the Shang culture, the Hongshan. These beautiful elements, these dragons from the Hongshan culture, which are I don't know, three thousand, but they date back from three thousand before Common Era. And you want me to believe that the Greek dragon, dragon is that the Ketos is not a dragon. Ketos is a marine creature, spawn of Poseidon in the primordial waters. Nothing to do with a dragon. Trust me. And um. I just cannot believe people will buy. Oh yeah, this one's the one I wanted to show you. I will find it on Pinterest, but this one was like, oh my god, look at this beauty! Look at this beauty! Let's look at this one. Where are you dating from, baby? Oh, you're from the fourth century. Look at look how bright he's striding. Oh my god, you're gorgeous, aren't you, Nerd? This is bronze. Oh my god, can we zoom in? We can't. Look, his back is inlaid with flowers. Or maybe they're not flowers, they're just scales because of the light I was confused. Look at his gesture, look at his gesture. Oh my God, I'm in love. I like this piece a lot. 
<laughs> it's so cute, isn't it? So yeah, you're telling me this this is depicted like that because of Greece. <laughs> what? <laughs> And this is the part, this is the point I want to make. There's nothing wrong with venturing into all the areas, but do contact experts on those areas, because if not, you're going to make a major mistake. And of course, yeah, these Eurocentrism, like if you read the book, at least that part, basically everything that's worth noting of China came from Greece. It's like, I, excuse me, I do not think so. I really do not think so. And this is not me neglecting, like neglecting this European heritage and shaming and throwing shade on Greece and the heritage. Absolutely not. But I know this. But shall I work with this? I work with these animals. I know of them. And for sure, for certain, the aspect of the dragon did not come from the Greek ghettos. This reptile, this uh, heavenly creature, was not let's just see this one. Oh, where is it? it it does not come from greece and something that oh my goodness gracious what what in the name of all right okay fine well pinterest is a weird place um oh but i like this one. Oh, sorry i'm getting distracted oh kind of dear i'm getting distracted i'm very sorry um where is it don't know cannot find it um nope I don't know, just, let's just look at this one. Oh, it's Wikimedia Commons, perfect. So, uh, what was I? Everything's wrong about this. Oh yeah, yeah, that I, uh, something that popped uh, up on my head was like, is it possible that it was the other way around? That the Greeks so the Chinese long, long lasting iconography, and then they wanted to import it? They wanted to represent the ghettos like these magnificent creature that was heavenly saint and auspicious and blah blah blah. Is that a possibility? No. It has to be the other way around. Greece in like exporting the art history and the iconography and the visual language. Which fair, it happened. We have examples of a lot of uh, Greek inspired capitals in India and in China. But have you noticed that everything every single time this exchange is pointed up? It's always the Mediterranean. Oh, oh, thank you, David. I am uh, Ian David Morris. <laughs> thank you. It's been a pleasure having you here. Uh, thank you for sharing these beautiful uh, lungs. I love them. I do love them. I hope to see you around some other time. And yeah, take care. Um, and you're really telling me why? Why couldn't be the opposite way? The other way around. Why wouldn't these creatures inspire the iconography of sea monsters? Um, <laughs> beautiful ancient power balance here, ain't that cute? But this is just this is just my my thoughts on it on the subject. But I think I am right in this one, and I do not believe I'm right in almost anything. But hear me out. If you are to speak about an area that is not your expertise, do contact someone that's an expert. It's not that difficult. They're gonna help you. We academics help each other out. I've helped uh, many friends with things that I wanted to know about Iran and that made the argument stronger. It's just, just this is not something that makes sense whatsoever. Like, absolutely not. It's even ridiculous if a person, and that's the thing, if a Chinese person were to read this paper, this book, and found that quote on it, it would be like, excuse me? <laughs> Where's your evidence? Because then, when you go to the notes, there's no evidence whatsoever. There's no, there's no, just there's nothing that is empty. It's quoting another book. And then there's giving you two drawings the author made himself. And just like, praise. I wish I could know what you could draw by myself. But are you, I don't know if I'm explaining myself. I hope I am. But it's just, it's very upsetting and very annoying because again, I mean, John Boardman, he, he is 93 years old and this is not a critique on his age. I am pretty sure that whatever he knows about Greece, he knows a lot. He's an expert. But about China though, you're messing about, an, we, you're messing with an iconography that's thousands of years of old and we're not talking about everything like, you know, it's just, a, less important creature we're talking about the dragon we're talking about the long the imperial sign the dragon is the shape of the emperor that descended from heaven and you want me to believe that such a figure took its visual 
aspect from Greek sources. Are we actually insane? I just, I just cannot. I cannot. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No. Mm -mm -mm. No, 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 no. I'm not accepting this. I'm just not accepting this. It's just, I, I refuse. I refuse. Uh -uh. No. Which one should we see now? Oh, this was really cute. There was, I, I like this one. I just, um, no. Do, do contact people that know more than you. You're going to learn so many things. It's just, I just can't believe I read that. It's so, uh, um, <laughs> good one, Pichu. So yeah, um, it's not just to talk about Eurocentrism. It's more to talk about if you you need to contact the experts. And also, uh, this is something I'm I'm a little annoyed as a person that had to learn English to thrive in the academic. Um, Yesterday topics poorly supported academic thesis a case study. This is just my rant about this. I saw this and it really it really pissed my heart, or local because because I work with dragons and I know how difficult it is to address a Chinese dragon. And these people do it, they, they did it freely and they just threw a bunch of nonsense on a piece of paper and that got published. And this person is an expert. He is, he's a reference in this world of classics. So whenever someone from classics that not doesn't know much about China read this, it's gonna believe this is true because this is a, a capable scholar. And it's not true, absolutely not. It says, yeah, as I was saying, as a person who had to learn English to thrive in the academic world, I I just cannot help but notice that when it comes to English native speakers, not all of them, of course, and I know I have many native speakers friends that don't do that, but they avoid sources in another languages because they, they cannot work them out. It's like, yeah, I couldn't work English out either, but I studied, so, you should, if you're talking about China, you should, the very least, consult a sinologist. Possibly they're gonna talk, like, speak English too. And then if you're talking, like, the, the amount of people, the amount of people that do history of, I don't know, the, uh, Latin America or France or Italy, and they do not speak the primary languages. But Cha, I am working with Iranian studies. The first thing I had to do is learn Persian. And I am learning it. It's just fundamental for me. But apparently it's not fundamental to many people. And you got the, you got a point there. It sounds like it got published on the weight of the reputation of the author. And I haven't read the rest of the book. I just read this chapter. I was infuriated. I was furious because the dragons are my babies. I love dragons. I know how difficult it is to navigate them. And uh, my supervisors know too. Not just in iconography and art history, but from the literature point of view too. Because dragons fulfill such fundamental roles in Ch Chinese cosmography. It's just a dragon is one of the four guardians on the sky just to give you a hint the ones in charge of protecting the lunar lodges I am I am mad <laughs> I am angry <laughs> This is not this is just not okay But possibly the rest of the book is quite okay because as I've been saying I'm not denying the Greek presence in in Asia It is there how do you spell ketos? It's K-E-T-O-S. Ketos. Let's just look him up. I mean, I have it here with me. Ketos. Greece. Greek mythology. Ketos, Greek mythology. Don't have it. Supposedly this is it. Oh, okay. All right. Supposedly this is it. Are you kidding me? This looks like a dog. <laughs> this inspired this. I can't. Where's my dragon? Where's my dragon? I lost him. Yeah, this inspired this. I mean, I don't know, Rick. It looks fake. I mean. Look at him! Look, look at him! He's he's cute, and oh, we don't even know if this one's Skettos. He's a sea monster, and this is from the third century. So this dragon is more ancient. What is happening, actually? Why am I getting so mad? Ketus. They do look similar. 
now. Oh, maybe not. Oh, Jesus. Oh my God. All right. This is, oh, this is actually very cute. Is this an Avo? This is very cute, I like it. All right, I really like when sources do not date the pictures whatsoever. Does it say, is it here? Where did you come from, buddy? Oh my, look at this. This is like a sea monster. This one's still my favorite. <laughs> It looks like a protagonist of like it, it could this one could feature in either Pokemon or Digimon, don't you think? Alright, I've seen enough. In Wikipedia there is a reference to John Boardman. Of course it is. What does it say? I need to see it. Ketus mythology. What is it? Pichu, what is it? Boardman, the Greeks in Asia, alright. The Ketus was variously described as a sea monster or sea serpent, or the version described Ketus as a monster with the head of a greyhound and the body of a whale of a dolphin. Cool, I like this one. And divided, fun tail like. That's actually very cute. Fighting Perseus as a mount. Oh, why? This is in Gandhara? How do you know this is Ketus? I'm not denying, I'm just asking. It could be all right because of the. It could be Ketus, but see, he looks like a dog. How how did these inspire the Chinese dog? Are we seeing? Oh, I'm really sorry. I'm going to close these ones. Are we actually having it? Like, are we taking a look at the Chinese dragon? Oh, oh, this is gorgeous. Oh my goodness gracious, this one. Can we zoom his beautiful face? Are you telling me that? Oh, where is it? I lost it. Where's my Ketus? Ah, you're saying this. Inspired this? How? When? How did this happen? Obviously it's Ketos, because Asians didn't see a fish until green came there. That's the point. If you read the book, it makes it look like the, the Chinese knew nothing about life, absolutely, but the Greeks came in and taught them absolutely everything. It's like, that is a pile of bull. <laughs> but I am not... This is the point. I'm not denying the influence of Greece and the Greek culture in Asia. But how is it that we rarely came to talk about the Chinese influence in Greece or the Persian influence in Greece? Where are fish in Chinese culture? Yeah, where are they? Where are they? Mm -mm -mm. Nowhere to be found. <laughs> I don't know. This is ah. Oh. I don't know. Ah, uh, but chat. This is just like ah. Oh. This is just no. It's a big no, no. It's a big no, no from it. And it's upsetting. It's a little bit. It's a wee bit upsetting because after all, this person's an eminence. They, they, he, he knows what he's talking about for sure. I mean, he studied the, the, the field. But when he came to him to talk about, that's, that's something I wonder. Is like, has he contacted? I, a mythologist, an expert in China, in, not in Chinese, but in Greek mythology, to talk about Ketos. Because even Wikipedia says that Ketos has the face of a dog. And there you're discussing in your book that the reptile-like look got inherited from the Greek sources in China. No. I'm just mad. I am. I am mad. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not sorry. I am just angry. I am just very angry that people believe that mythology can't be done like this, is it? Especially mythology of very far off areas of our understanding. It's not even far off areas, geographically, geographically speaking. Even if he's an eminence, no one's perfect. What we are discussing here is what are the sources exactly? What are the sources and what kind of... Because in order to affirm something that fundamental and that important, you ought to carry out and conduct a very thorough research with Chinese sources comparing um, 
uh, Chinese pieces to Greek pieces to learn about the travel and learn how and when these contacts took place and how the figure of the Ketos was integrated in the Chinese visual language all the other way around, how the dragon made its way into the Greek visual languages and how the, it was a portable object, was it textiles, because as far as we know Ketos was not represented that much, so I'm annoyed and you know why because this is the kind of thing I do for my thesis and I am aware of its difficulty I know how difficult it is to do something like that but just to dedicate a paragraph on your book to say hey you know what this Chinese dragon we love and cherish so much they're actually Greek they're absolutely not Greek there is not such thing as a Greek dragon <laughs> oh my god I'm very angry I'm very angry right now. I'm very, I, I don't know why I'm smiling. I think it's because I'm on camera and I'm with you, but child, but I am upset. I don't know what else to say, to be honest. I have no idea what else to say. That's it. It's just, please contact experts on the area you want to work about. It's not wrong for you to work on it. Just, be sure you know what you're doing. That's that's just it. That's just, that's my final thesis, my final statement. Mythologists are there. Sinologists, which are, if you don't know, experts in Chinese studies, are there too. Art historians are there to be contacted. An art historian would just... They won't be happy. They wouldn't be happy at the way this person wrote about certain particular things. But yeah, and just remember the, the dragons that we, I'm just, I want to see him again, I want to see him again, oh my god, he's gorgeous, I'm gonna, we're going to see him again, we're going to see him again, look at him, look at him, oh my god, I love him, yeah, it's just the Chinese dragons that we cherish and we like, um, they are Chinese and they come from there. And also, how is this influenced by Greece? And it's not influenced by India, by Japan, by Korea, by Mongolia, but you know what I mean? It has to be Greece. Why is P2 confronting, which is their academic background to like... Don't attribute to ignorance, but you can attribute to trying to get attention. Probably is a consequence of a bet. What? So you know the dragons come from Greece. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? That is that that was actually a thing. Like, hey, I dare you, I double dare you to publish a book saying that Chinese dragons come actually from Greece. And Mr. Boardman there saying, Yeah, hold my beer, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> exactly, Pichu, exactly. No, don't worry, Ludwig. Uh Pichu's not confronting. Pichu has a very um wide variety of opinions and uh, he likes he's challenging. I like Pichu because he's very challenging. He challenges everything he's presented with. And that kind of critical thought is very positive and it's a I think he's endearing, he's something to cultivate, to just to question things that we see. According to Wiki, even the translator of the Bible thought aketos, like a kind of fish. In Jonah, they translated that gadol, big fish, for mega ketos. Oh my goodness, the mega ketos. It sounds like the mega zord. Go, go, Power Rangers. <laughs> they get credits in. Oh, Jesus, beat you. <laughs> but yeah, I just, don't you like it? Can I zoom in? Can I zoom him? I think I can't zoom him. I'm really just assuming who you are, boy. The most gorgeous boy. Oh my goodness, look at these teeth. Look at this muscle on the horns on the beauty what are you wh when are you from even i don't know i don't need to know i love you the ones i have on my thesis are very pretty too i wish i could show you one day not on twitch i'll tell you the story of jonah the big fish and his okay <laughs> i know the story from the from the quran um i know yuna and the big fish oh hello kiwi so yeah, basically, what we've learned today is that if you are to discuss a topic you're not an expert, search for the help because it's there. And it's not like things are not written about Chinese dragons enough to research because I use them. I've used them. Um, but yeah, just um, really sorry for the rant. I hope I didn't come up. 
I sure I, I hope I didn't come across as as angry I actually was but but this upsets me because it's my work field so your grandmother looks like a Chinese dragon then she must be so gorgeous isn't she 